We come to worship God. May our time together in this sacred space renew us in hope. May the music we hear lift our spirits. May the words we speak invigorate us. May the sight of faces new and familiar restore us in faith. Today, may there be peace within and between us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, sun and moon, all you shining stars, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for the breath of God commanded and they were created, and established they are forever and ever. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling God's command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, queens, baby princes, prime ministers and presidents of the earth and all peoples, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, Praise the Lord. acknowledge that this church is built on the land of the Ghana people, the traditional custodians of the Adelaide Plains. We honour all First Peoples and their ceremony and ritual throughout this vast land. We also honour those who have gone before us in this place. We pray that in the power of the Holy Spirit we might work together for reconciliation and justice in this land. Welcome. Welcome to our worship. We greet you all as part of our extended family. The Word of God, through which we hear your call within our lives. This water. Reminds us of our baptism and commitment to a new way of living as followers of Christ. 
Let us offer our praise to God. We lift our voices in gratitude and praise. Creator, we adore you. All creation reflects your glory. We lift our voices in gratitude and praise. You have made women, men, girls and boys in your image. You welcome those who are vulnerable with open arms of compassionate acceptance. We lift our voices in gratitude and praise. Redeemer, we adore you. All creation is reconciled in you. We lift our voices in gratitude and praise. Where the weak and broken lie bruised and discarded, you challenge the complacent, revealing the truth behind our lies, and invite the wounded to your feast of life. We lift our voices in gratitude and praise. Sustainer, we adore you. All creation is inspired by you. We lift our voices in gratitude and praise. You breathe life into places of deathly fear. You increase our understanding of things hard to comprehend and draw us into your dance of loving joy. We lift our voices in gratitude and praise. God, three in one, all creation sings of your great deeds. We lift our voices in gratitude and praise. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. I'd like to extend my welcome to you as well to this uh, day of uh, worship and celebration. Now, I'm needing some volunteer help. So I'm looking for... Uh, young people, before you all run out, uh, and anyone else that's not young, I need about 10 or 15 people to come and gather around me, please. So uh, anyone who would like to be part of that, come and... You don't need to sit down, just stand up for the moment. So come over, anyone? Young or old, come. Please. Good, okay, cool. Need a few more. Need a few more. That's it, come on over. David. All right. How about we all turn around and face that way? That's good. All right. So gather and come in, right in close, right in close. Okay. Jesus tells, a, uh, in the Bible reading today, Jesus tells us that he has given us a new commandment. That doesn't mean there are old commandments we shouldn't worry about, but he says this is a new commandment. This is a, like another commandment. This is the best one. He says, this is the one I want you to... Uh, really take hold of and he says this is what he says love one another as I have loved you so I thought to myself how am I going to get that across to the kids time and the focus time so I thought to myself okay everybody who's wearing brown shoes in this group come and stand over here please I'm not wearing brown shoes so everyone wearing brown shoes come and stand here all right, thank you. Okay, good. Okay, everyone who's wearing a watch, come and stand here. All right. Everyone who has got a T-shirt on, come and stand here. Everyone who's got a T-shirt on. All right. Everyone who's wearing a green or yellow dress, <laughs> come and kneel here. <laughs> Everyone who might be wearing um, red, come and stand here. I got a red tie. Oh, Eunice. Oh, um, anyone who is um, absolutely talented on the piano, come and stand in this gap here. Okay. What a wonderful bunch of people. Now, do they all look the same? Are they different? Do you exclude them because we've got brown shoes? 
or T-shirts? No. Or musically talented people? Or green and yellow dresses? Blue. Okay, what about all those who are standing with microphones on their heads? That's me. I'm feeling left out. No, I'm not. Oh, beautiful. This is come and st- come and join my community, our community. Aren't we just a lovely bunch of people? Not just us two, but all of us here. What did Jesus say? Love one another as I have loved you. I think if we go around in our world excluding people and making groups of people and saying you can't or you're not good enough or you've got different things on, you look different, I don't think that's what Jesus was on about when he said love one another as I have loved you. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on. So just I thought a visual this morning of we are all different but we're all the same. Thank you very much for joining my little experiment. Please be seated. We're going to sing a song, and uh, the song is called Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. So uh, as we stand, if you're able to stand and sing, we'll sing this one through. Thank you.
We come now to a time of prayer of confession. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God. Even though we have rebelled against him, let us then renounce our willfulness and seek his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Let us pray together. We have not always lived in ways that reflect God's love for all. There are times when prejudice and ignorance have caused us to judge others as less important, less capable, less whole than ourselves. Gracious God, release us and grant us mercy. We have not always lived as God assured of our place in God's heart. There are times when despair has been our refuge and we have turned from God's promises. Gracious God, release us and grant us life. We have not always lived as disciples of Jesus. There are times when the paths to wealth and power have been more attractive than the longer roads of justice, peace and tolerance. Gracious God, release us and grant us We have not always lived as people of the resurrection. There are times when we have only seen the world as a place of threat and brokenness, forgetting God's creative genius. Gracious God, release us and grant us wisdom. In quietness, we remember those thoughts, actions, and words that have marred your image in us, hurt others and damaged the world. God has heard the confession of our hearts and minds. In Christ we are set free. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our first reading comes from John Chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God had been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you, only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another.
Our second reading comes from Acts 11, verses 1 to 18. Soon the news reached the apostles and other believers in Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God. But when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, the Jewish believers criticized him. You entered the home of Gentiles and even ate with them, they said. Then Peter told them exactly what had happened. I was in the town of Joppa, he said, and while I was praying, I went into a trance and saw a vision. Something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners from the sky, and it came right down to me. When I looked inside the sheet, I saw all sorts of tame and wild animals, reptiles and birds, and I heard a voice say, Get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, I replied, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. But the voice from heaven spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. This happened three times before the sheet and all it contained was pulled back up to heaven. Just then, three men who had been sent from Caesarea arrived at the house where they were staying. Thank you, Katrina, for sharing those readings with us and for us in singing a new commandment. Well, for as long as I can remember, the church has always faced difficulties in understanding the area of inclusivity and diversity. Whether it be over big issues such as theology, leadership, other faiths, sexuality, gender, social justice, evangelism, baptism or communion. Or smaller issues such as music choices, hymns or songs organs or drums, worship times, or whether we should use wine or grape juice for Holy Communion. The church has often been quick, on the surface at least, to draw dividing lines that have stated positions and excluded others who don't seem to fit. The issue is that some people have very set opinions, while another raise questions and seek to bring down barriers. The church at every level has grappled with this issue of inclusiveness and exclusiveness for years. And it probably will for years to come. God-fearing, intelligent, wise and passionate people have tried to hold the church together, while others have challenged the status quo. And I think one of, the one of the strengths and the positives of the Uniting Church, at least, is how it conducts its debates in a way that it's regulated, the way it expresses its theology, and its understanding of unity in all diversity. You see, we are a multicultural, theologically diverse, nationwide church. Its strength, I believe, is in holding this together by encouraging its people, that is you and me, to live together in our diversity. 
to live as faithful Christians who follow Christ in word and action in this complex and fast-changing society. As we explored here a few moments ago, people are different. People are different for a reason. Imagine if a church was full of people that looked like me. (laughs) You laugh. I wonder why. Wouldn't it be a great place to live? All the people just like me. But we're not the same. We're different. Take a look around. Literally, take, have a look at each other. Diverse, aren't we? Do you see anyone exactly the same as you? If God is calling people to sharing in ministry and leadership, tasks and responsibilities within God's own church, as God does, and we as the church, the body of Christ, the wise, the devoted, intelligent and educated fellow members of the church, then who should we reject? Who should we leave out? Especially if all other criteria for selection is you know, met, But we are different. I'm not saying that we should be, it should be free for all and that we just go for anything. But because we're different, it is our gift. Is our difference the factor in determining who's in and who's out? I think not. In fact, I know not. I think Peter learnt a great lesson that day when he had this dream, this vision of a sheet coming down from heaven with all different animals in it, the blanket of food. God's grace is inclusive. It is inclusive of all and it represents everybody. I think we can learn from this vision of Peter for our church and our society. Peter was a Jew, a Jewish person. And to associate as a Jewish person, let alone eat with non-Jewish people, especially a Roman or an Italian or a pagan, or an unclean person, an officer of the occupying army, was wrong. The Bible, the Old Testament, declared it. Keep yourself holy. And Peter knew it. And he studied the Scriptures. He probably heard sermons preached about it. But we know that this Cornelius bloke was a good man, a God-fearing man. He knew God, shared his faith with his family and friends, and expressed his faith through good works. He was even in the habit of daily personal prayer. Yet he was not allowed in the synagogue, the place of Jewish worship. Let alone, Cornelius was not allowed to be a leader. And God shows Peter a vision. Food that Jewish people could not eat because of the law. But God says, Peter, eat. And in Peter's disgust and confusion and knowledge of Scripture, he says to God, no way. It is not right. There is unclean stuff here. I'm not even going to touch it, let alone eat it. And God's reply 
Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. The Bible tells us, the scripture reading tells us, that this happened not just once, but three times. Three times. Three times. Is there any significance in Peter's life that has something else happening in three times? On a couple of occasions, yes. The lesson we learn from Peter's vision and the subsequent meeting of this Roman officer Cornelius is to be careful of what, or more importantly, who, we call wrong or unclean. For we're talking about people. People who are different. People who express their sexuality different from us. Their leadership styles. Their theological understandings. Their worship. Even their worldview and even political alliances, allegiances. We need to remember that our and somebody's brother or sister, son or daughter, is that other person. Don't call unclean that which God has called clean. Paul puts it well in Galatians 3.28 by saying that there is no longer Jew nor Greek. There is no longer slave nor free. There is no longer male nor female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Imagine the stress Peter must have experienced when he arrived back at his local church or synagogue. The story goes in Acts 11 that the news travelled fast and in no time at all the leaders and his friends back in Jerusalem had heard about it, about these non-Jewish people, these Gentiles, these outsiders are now in. The vote was cast Two-thirds majority had won the day. When Peter got back to Jerusalem, some of his old associates were concerned and they Facebooked him and said, what do you think you're doing? This is a text. What do you think you're doing rubbing shoulders with that crowd? Eating what is prohibited and ruining our good name. End of tweet. Second tweet, they're not like us. They're not as good as us. Keep away from them. Yet Jesus was on about making the kingdom of God accessible to all. Jesus never turned anyone away. He shared meals with people on the outside he taught people about the great kingdom of God and how it's like a great wedding banquet or a party where the fatted calf is is killed and and celebrated with a great feast today's text emphasizes the call to love the call to love one another as I have loved you And so we gather in the hearing of those two scripture verses today. No one is excluded or should be excluded. Jesus never said to anyone, no, you can't receive from me. You're not good enough. Or you're too different. You're wearing a red tie. You can't join the club. You're not like us. Peter learnt a great lesson that day of inclusiveness, tolerance and relationship with the vision of the blanket and the food. And so my prayer today is that we as the church, the church here at Moriata, the church here, online, interstate, wherever we might be, the church in South Australia and the church in Australia, that we would be sensitive, that we would be careful as to how we grapple with the issues of faith and we follow the teachings and example of Jesus of tolerance 
and acceptance and love. Let us never call another unclean or unworthy or unwelcome, even those who are different from us. For they have the God-given right and the Christ-given right to be in fellowship with the body of Christ. Food for thought, really. Or as Jesus would say, those with ears, let us listen. So I invite us to sing a song. It's a song about accepting one another. Help us accept each other, Lord. If you're able, please stand. which affirms our willingness to participate in the ministry and mission of God through our own local congregation, the wider church, and in the life of the world will now be received.
center of the universe untold all praise is yours throughout the nation as I sing before you in the We who take much for granted pool our resources and our hopes and ask God to bless them that we may be part of shaping a world of justice where there is enough for all. Amen. A prayer of intercessions. As we offer our prayers for the world and ourselves we will share in times of silence allowing us to reflect on the needs of others and our own experiences. As we reflect, it may be that God will speak into that silence and help us to understand the world and our lives in new ways. Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise you for your creation and all you richly provide. Enable us to live in such a way that your majesty and mercy are seen by all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. All governments rule under your authority. We pray for the newly elected Liberal government. May they work for the good of those they govern, seeking your justice and peace in every law and action. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Enable those who are engaged in industry and commerce, the media and education, sport and the arts, to fulfill their responsibilities with integrity and an attitude of service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Comfort and strengthen those who are gripped by poverty, weakened by illness, or oppressed by cruelty. May they know your love and experience your care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Inspire your church here on earth to proclaim the gospel of your love in the death and resurrection of your Son. May all people hear the call to trust you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Help your people to display your compassion to all those in need. May the poor and the lost of this world find in you their true wealth and sure identity. Refresh and equip us, O God, to be your faithful and obedient people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brother, sister, let me serve you. song brother sister let me serve you let us now go and to put that love into practice being an inclusive and welcoming community both here in this place and in our society may the god of peace of jesus of love and the holy spirit of energy be with you all until we meet again amen peace be with you share that with you with each other as we go peace be with you